the hills and valleys around Tregaron were once the playing fields of Tom Sean Catty, highwayman, thief and prankster. No one told a merrier or taller tale than Tom, or laughed more at his own jests. And his exploits were legendary throughout South Wales. Tom took his last names, Catty from his mother Catherine, and his father, Sir John Wynne of Gwydir, even if he didn't acknowledge it. He was a handsome man, and one of many faces. He could swap between the fine robes of a gentleman or the rags of a peasant to suit his mischievous deeds. What's more, the rascal could even disguise the animals he'd stolen, so that their owners didn't recognize them. One day he took to Brecon a bull, truly the blue ribbon kind, but with a stumpy tail, which he'd rustled from a local farmer. Tom had used plant dye to change the color of its coat, and he'd glued a long switch of false hair onto its rump. At market, the true owner prodded and pried. Why, but for the tail? This would be my bull. And he challenged Tum to prove it was real. No matter. The Joker simply cut off the extra hair with a hidden slice of the creature's own short tail so that it bled a little. Hm, you must buy the bull now that you've made me harm it, cried Tum. And the crowd of onlookers echoed him. In this way, the farmer was forced to pay ten pounds for his own animal, and its tail was shorter than ever. Another man who'd been tricked by Tum came looking for him at his mother's cottage. However, Tum had been warned of his coming, so he put beggar's rags over his own garments and sat outside the doorway. Here's a coin for looking after my horse, said the visitor, tossing him a penny. And he also gave Tom his silver whip to hold. No sooner had he crossed over the threshold than Tom jumped into the saddle and galloped away to the farmer's house, discarding his tatters as he rode. On arriving, he pummeled the door. Mistress, your husband's in need of fifty pounds in order to catch that villain Tom Sean Catty, and he's asked me to take it back to him. Here's his whip as a token to prove my words. Believing him, the wife thrust at Tum a large purse containing the money, which he tucked inside his jacket. With many thanks, he sped away as fast as he could, straight up the road to London. In Welsh winters, Tum was fond of hot porridge on cold mornings, and one day, he needed a new pot. In Llandovery, the ironmonger showed him several. Tom picked one up and examined it closely. Friend, this pot has a large hole in it, he exclaimed. The shopkeeper peered into it also, but he just couldn't see any hole. Tom jammed the pan down over his head, grabbed up all the others, and rushed for the door, laughing. If there wasn't a hole in it, how could you get your head stuck inside? As a gentleman of the road, he was always polite and generous. In other words, giving to the poor what he'd taken from the rich. When there came into his neighborhood another highwayman, well known for his ferocity and meanness, Tom decided to play a trick on him. Dressed in the drab clothes of a poor crofter, Tum climbed onto a thin horse. The nag's saddlebags were packed with seashells, which clinked like coins as they ambled along the road. Out from the bushes sprang the robber, brandishing a pistol. His dark and glossy mare stood quietly, half hidden in trees nearby. Over the opposite hedgerow went the bags as Tom pretended to panic, and into the thorns went his victim, chasing the sound of false gold. 
Then Tom leapt onto the thief's mare and raced away. At his leisure, he unburdened the horse and plunged his hands into its saddlebags, full of hard cash and sparkling jewels. Although he kept clear of the king's lawmen, Tom was easily captured by a beautiful woman. She was already married to a wealthy landowner, but promised her hand to her exciting suitor if the elderly husband died. In due time, she found herself sole mistress of Ustrad Fien. Tom dashed to her side, but by now the lady was enjoying her independence, not to say spending money, and she decided for the moment to stay single. This didn't deter Tom, and he set up camp in a nearby cave. It was a good hideaway for an outlaw, only reached after climbing through the steep woodland beside a rushing river. The cave's entrance was a narrow crack hidden among the trees, and yet he could see for miles over the Toei Valley. From here, he could often visit his true love's house, even if she did keep refusing to let him in. Tom decided on a ploy to win her. One morning, he begged to see her, since, he said, he was leaving next day to fight in France. Let me at least kiss your hand in farewell. Well, the lady began to regret her hard-heartedness, and she held her arm out through the bars of a window. That was enough. Tom seized her wrist and held on tightly. Never will I let you go until you have agreed to become my wife. Of course, she resisted at first. She couldn't give in too easily. So Tom drew his sword and flourished it, crying, I will cut off your hand rather than let it go. At this, she relented and quickly agreed to marry him before the day was out. Within a few years, Tom was granted a pardon by good Queen Bess. In truth, he became so respectable that he was made a justice of the peace and passed sentence sympathetically on many a charming rogue.